fabric in here. Ooh, look at this gray and white. Nice slit in the front. Love that. Hi everyone, welcome back to Blueprint DIY, where we remake our clothes to be just as unique as us. Today, I am super excited to bring you guys one of my own designs for a Blueprint Signature. We're gonna do a tutorial on that. I think it's really simple, but it is definitely going to teach you how to make pleats semi-permanent, um, pleats that stay as long as you don't like wash them out. And then also it's a drop waist skirt, including denim. So you're gonna be able to use some of your denim pieces. Maybe you cut off the legs to use it for something else, which we do all the time. So this is our way of reusing the tops of jeans. That's a really cute skirt. I'm excited to share with you guys. If you're not a DIYer, definitely check the link in the description box. So you can go buy it. Um, you can order it in your size. But if you are a DIYer, Wire. Let's do it. All right. It is very cold in my office. So uh, we are loved <laughs> today. So for this project, I am using, like I said, the tops of a pair of jeans that we cut off. And I love the idea of a drop waist skirt. So you want to try on your jeans first. You want them to fit in the waist and you want to mark them so that you mark a point that is right in the middle of your bum and right at your waist. And you're gonna mark that all the way across. And I also, for this project, have fabric. I know I very rarely work with fabric, but I did buy this from the thrift store. Um, so it, I am diverting it from the landfill just as much as I'm diverting these jeans from the landfill. So we're gonna use this. So I am making this one for the site. It will be listed after this. The size is like 40, 41 waist. We're gonna go ahead and cut off for the waist. I do not want to cut my pockets. I wanna keep those, but the back pockets, I don't really care about too much. Okay, we just wanna make sure it's even on both sides. I cut a little bit higher right here, but it's gonna be fine. Then you want to go ahead over to your serger. If you're gonna finish the edges and you're gonna go ahead and serge this edge down here. You wanna verify that you didn't cut any of the pocket, which I did on both sides, on both sides. Way to be consistent, you know? But we're gonna fix that. We're gonna serge the end, the edges. I wanna show you the serger that I'm working on right now. All right, today I am using the Baby Lock Victory, which is an air threader serger. Threaded it for the first time live, um, which in my opinion was a little bit frustrating because I didn't read the instructions first, but I wanted to know if it was intuitive and it is gonna be different than, well, uh, obviously it's different than threading a regular serger, but some of the instructions you do need to go through, but now that I have it, you know, it is straightforward to thread. Um, is it going to be necessarily faster? If you have a really hard time threading your serger, um, then yes, it's definitely gonna be faster. Um, but if you're used to threading your serger and you can do it within like maybe two minutes, then in my opinion, it's not necessarily faster. But is it easier? Yes, it is easier. Let's cut our pieces for our skirt. This is a suiting material. So it's the same thing that suits are made out of. It's a 30 inch, or I guess 60 inch uh, width. And we're gonna cut 34 inches down, 34 inches. And I haven't talked about this in a while. I do use little pieces of soap to mark because I just find that it's easier to remove. I know it's standard to use chalk in sewing, but this is free and that's what I like to do. All right, and then we're gonna cut our next one 27 inches. You may need, depending on, you know, like um, how wide or how close you want your pleats, how full you want the skirt to be. Of course, you may need to cut more of these panels. All right, 27. All right, now we're gonna cut. All 
All right, so for the purposes of the pleating tutorial, I'm gonna work with this shorter piece of fabric. I just think it'll be easier for you guys to see um, because I am actually gonna go first, surge, surge both sides of this. Because this fabric does have lines, it makes it very easy to pleat. If you are going to use a fabric that does not have lines on it and you just wanna make it easier for yourself, you'll just mark, use your ruler, measuring tape, to mark along the edge, you know, like every two inches, every whatever, however many inches, and then you're going to go ahead and pleat it. For my purposes, I'm gonna use these lines as a guide. So in order to start my pleats, I'm actually gonna start six lines up because I do wanna keep the selvage edge, but I'm gonna pleat every four lines. So I'm gonna just take that line and fold it over to the fourth line after that. And then I'm going to go across, kind of match that line just to make sure I'm staying on track and that I have it right. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. The reason I'm going back and forth like this is just to make sure that I have the same pleating at the top as well as at the bottom and I don't get off. But then after that, I'm just going to go up four lines, fold it over to the next four lines and keep going like that so that my pleats are nice and tight. You can pleat literally however you want. I mean, your pleats don't even have to be even if you don't want. I'm just doing this just because I have the lines. It's a guide. One, two, three, four. So I'm going to make this as simple as possible. One, two, three. And I've pleated before and having fabric with lines definitely makes pleating so much easier. So once I get all of these pleats done, I am going to go take this to my ironing board and I'm going to spray a mixture of vinegar and water. That's all that's in this spray bottle is vinegar and water. It's not equal parts, but it's maybe one third vinegar, two thirds water. And I'm gonna spray that all over and then I'm going to pleat it. It does smell like vinegar when you are doing it, but afterwards the project doesn't smell like vinegar. It's just like when you clean with vinegar, you can smell it while you're cleaning, but it doesn't leave it smelling like vinegar. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and finish these pleats and move along. And if you haven't subscribed, what are you waiting for? Definitely hit the subscribe button and turn on all notifications so you don't miss a thing. We are still in the middle of our DIY and our dream Pinterest wardrobe series. And if you missed the tutorial for this amazing sweater that was upcycled from a blanket, a crochet blanket, you don't wanna miss that. It does include a pattern. I will link that above, but we have some exciting, super exciting stuff coming up. If you guys remember my game show, Next Stop Upcycle, we are bringing that back in a new format. If you wanna participate, definitely check out this video right there. There. I'll include a timestamp, so, but because it's all the way at the end of the video, but definitely watch this video right here so you'll know how to submit to be the next top upcycler for the month of February. And I'm super excited to see you guys' submissions. So definitely subscribe so you don't miss a thing. And let's get back to the video. All right, so now I've made my pieces. Um, I actually have the short pieces right here. And these are the two long pieces. I have two pieces, two long pieces now, because I have to attach them together. After I pleated it, the width of these and the width of the denim didn't match. I needed another piece. So I took, cut another piece that was long and just cut half of it and pleated it. So now I need to attach these two together. Together. I'm gonna line them up. They're not exactly the same length, so I can cut off more on that side. No worries. Uh, gonna line them up so that they're four and four. And then I'm going to sew them together here. So now I can fold it out and you'll be able to see I need to sew them together here, hands, just to make sure it doesn't move around. So we're gonna take this and just make a top stitch to close this up, make this one long piece. And then I am going to make a basting stitch along the top edge to solidify the pleats. Then I can take all of the clips off, but I'm gonna keep my clips in here until 
I have solidified my pleats with a basting stitch. All right, we are ready to attach. All right, so now after we line it up, the way I lined it up is I like the selvage edge to show. That is just a personal preference. You can go ahead and hem that, connect that, do whatever you like. But for my design, that's how it goes. Um, I'm gonna line this, the shorter one up to be in the back and then the longer one to go in front and I want it to line up with up with the fly. We want to kind of stay the same distance above since we made that even. And then I just want to pin it along the way to see how much I have to work with. Once again, I'm gonna pull my pocket out of the way. And I am gonna measure just to make sure we have the same distance on both sides, nine inches. We're a little bit lower than nine inches, so we're gonna move this up just a bit. So now we're gonna turn it over and continue on the back. And you can see all of these beautiful crispy pleats. Okay, let me see how much we have on this side. All right, so now, that we are to the back in order to get it just right because this doesn't meet the middle i just you can add another skinny part if you want it to meet exactly in the middle but like i said we're playing with asymmetry so that doesn't really bother me too much so i may just end it so that it's like this so you have like these pleats coming over one another but i don't want to really pin them too much because it's more important what it's doing on like lining up in the front than it is back here. So I'm just gonna kind of loosely pin these in place. Okay, so now what we can do is um, we can start from the front. Always start from where you care about when you're sewing. So I'm gonna start from the front, I'm gonna put it into the sewing machine like this, start from the front and go around to the back. And then I'll turn it around and do the same thing. It depends if it's meeting up pretty well then maybe I'll just keep going you can see that I went all the way around I didn't really have any discrepancies we do have a nice slit in the front love that we have the un unfinished edges all around and the denim go hand to hand and now I can go ahead and close up the back of it I'm going to go ahead and sew this down to this piece of fabric right here. Not through the whole thing, like not through the all the layers, but just right through here. All right, so we're just gonna make a top stitch up there um, so that we can close it and it'll be listed on the site. Baby, it's a big dark world. You don't need to know about that. Don't need to know about that. I'll protect you with my light. You don't need to know about that Don't need to know about that Just let me love you 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 So you can see me there style it i'm styling it there for the brand um so i didn't style it in the office but for the brand i wore it to church and it was a big big hit at church and everywhere we wear it, it's a big hit i love the movement of it it has amazing movement and you know it's a long skirt a maxi skirt but it has that nice little slit up the front if you don't want to include that of course like i always say you can do what do you want to do however you want to style it make it to your liking but i love that and yes, this is definitely one of those staple skirts. So if you want to make it, definitely let me know how you're going to do yours. And have you been lucky enough to find fabric in your thrift store? Like it, all the fabric, we got a lot of it, but it's like slim pickings now. But we're hoping, we're hopeful to find more. I wish we had a dead stock fabric store here, but you know, I think we'll try to go online and see if we can find more fabric. Definitely subscribe so you don't miss a thing. And I'll see you in the next one. All right. Bye.